uh yeah good evening everybody um uh, uh, like it's been good to have come together uh, after a wonderful time of prayer um so today uh, we we would be uh, as as we were discussing last week on from Deuteronomy chapter 12 uh we uh, it had like many things that uh, we discussed one was uh, uh i think the, the one one of them was the be uh, ruthless against the idolatry uh, uh and not to entertain any kind of idols and how god had actually asked israelites to just cut off every idol present uh, in in israel when they enter the land of israel the second was a, uh, we had a good discussion on the place of worship uh, how god instructed israelites uh, in the old testament to offer uh, offer sacrifices Uh, only in jerusalem or only in the place that god had designated and how in the new testament we are free um, uh, because of uh, what christ has done on the cross and because of the presence of the holy spirit we are free to worship in any other place and we had uh, many verses from uh, uh, new testament we discussed uh, a few two where uh, that when two or three gather together in in his name his his spirit is there so uh so that was the second topic and the third topic was the 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 uh, the our uh, gratitude towards tithe and uh, and it's interesting that uh, uh joji uncle this week um uh, had uh, uh like d- during the sunday church service he had uh, uh, I, i think he described it pretty well on the purpose of tithe and uh, uh even in the new testament but the main point was that it's all about uh, just giving thanks for what god had done and it's just a, a sense of gratitude it is a sense of gratitude towards god and uh, even in the new even in the old testament it was about god loves the cheerful giver uh, so the last point or the last topic from the chapter 12 uh, even though we read it completely was uh, about uh, uh, the blood in the meat Uh, or the, uh, or drinking the blood uh, so not not blood in the meat but drinking the blood so probably we can actually read that uh, just that section from chapter 12 uh, um, so that uh, uh, or maybe like so for the context so we we can probably read from verse 8 to um, 25 uh, if somebody can read from verse 8 to 14 uh, and next person can read from 15 to uh, 20 and third person can read from 21 to 20 that's chapter 8 i mean chapter 12 chapter 12 okay you are not you are not to do as we do here today everyone doing as they see fit since you have not yet reached the resting place and the inheritance the lord your god is giving you but you will cross the jordan and settle in the land the lord your god is giving you as an inheritance and he will give you rest from all your enemies around you so that you will live in safely in safety then to the place the lord your god will choose as a dwelling for his name there you are to bring everything i command you you are burnt offering and sacrifices your tight and special gifts and all the choice possessions you have vowed to the lord and they rejoice and they rejoice before the lord your god you your sons and your daughters your male and female servants and the and the levites from your towns who have no at all a lot a lot men or inheritance to their own that's a uh, uh, verse 12 you want me to continue uh, uh, yeah i think i need to put the picket up from verse 13 to 20 okay be careful not to sacrifice your burnt offering anywhere you please offer them only at the place the lord will choose in one of your tribes and there observe everything i command you 
Nevertheless, you may slaughter your nevertheless you may slaughter your animals in any of your towns and eat as much of the meat as you want, as if it were gazling, gazling or deer. Gazling or deer. According to the blessing the Lord your God gives you. Both the ceremony ceremonially unclean and clean may eat it. But you must not eat the blood, pour it out to the pour it out on the ground like water. You must not eat your own down to the tight of your gain, your grains and new wine and olive oil, or the firstborn of your head and flocks, or whatever you have vowed to give, or your free will offering or special gifts. Instead, you are to eat them in the presence of your God at the place the Lord, your God will choose you. Your sons, your daughter, your male, and female servants, the Levites from your towns, and you are to rejoice before the Lord your God in everything you put your hand to. Be careful not to neglect the Levites as long as you live in your land. That's verse 19. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody else can read from verse 20 to 25. When the Lord your God has enlarged your territory, as he promised you, and you crave meat and say, I would like to eat some meat, then you may eat as much of it as you want. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far away from you, you may slaughter animals from the heads and flocks the Lord has given you, as I have commanded you. And your own town, you may eat as much of them as you want. Eat them as you would gazzle or no, eat them as you would gazzle or tear. Both the ceremonially unclean and clean may eat. But be sure you do not eat the blood, because the blood is the life. And you must not eat the you must not eat eat the life with the meat. You must not eat the blood, pour it out on the ground like water. Do not eat it, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, because you will be doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord. That's twenty five. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the main theme um, of this uh, this section of the uh, chapter was uh, where like Moses is repeatedly mentioning. I think uh, uh, I think the, uh, we, when we st start reading from verses eight to fourteen, he mentioned about the sacrifice and the sacrifice in included that uh, blood offering or a sin offering where the animal's blood was poured out near the altar. Like uh, I think it's uh, mentioned here or in Leviticus, like the whole of the blood was offered um, on the altar. And it was a symbol uh, for Israelites to remember that the sin cost something. It's mainly the symbol that there is a sacrifice needed. Uh, and uh, and I think the, at, at the end of the, I think the in the, the main theme even in the old testament it is that uh that 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 particular offering or that sin offering or the blood offering uh it's actually it's actually just pointing out or just a symbol or a uh, or i would say a sign for the greatest sacrifice that uh, christ will be doing on the cross because uh, it's in actually roman chapter 3 uh, it's mentioned that uh, that the Old Testament, uh, I think you can read that uh, in chapter three. I think, you know, uh, yeah, it's in it's in verse uh, twenty. Uh, uh, we can read from twenty three, or I can read from twenty three. It's uh, 
uh, from 22, the Romans chapter 3, verses 22. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had let, left sins committed beforehand unpunished. Uh, this is actually like the, the, the verse 25, uh, which says that he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He, and which is actually pointing out to the Old Testament. He did it to demonstrate his justice at present time, so as to be just and one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So this clearly points out like even the annual sacrifice that was done, um, that was like, uh, I think that's what I think Moses has been dif differentiating the ceremonially clean, uh, which is mainly like to have come with an attitude of, uh, I, think, I, think, I think not to be casual, not to be casual about uh, just offering sacrifice, thinking that, oh, I have sinned, probably if I give a goat or give a ox to God, God would be happy and he will forgive me. But I think the main theme was to, uh, for God was reminding that there's a death involved in the sin. So so that was the uh, background of the sacrifice. And, but it's in, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's, but he continues it. He continues about like, now he's talking about having, um, or having, uh, like allowing people to meet, eat meat. And uh, uh, it's interest. Uh, it's uh, actually the word I think it's been repeated is uh, 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 it's, uh, that you can eat any animal like gazelle or deer, which is both are wild animals. And um, I think uh, in chapter 14, it talks about a list of animals uh, which were allowed uh, uh, in the Old Testament law for Israelites to eat. Uh, and I think it's main, I think the main important part is that I think these animals had, uh, especially like I'm not, sh I, I haven't looked into about gazelle or deer, but like the the cattle, especially the uh, the bull or the cow, they ha they had like their body structure in such a way that their blood was clean, in the sense of their blood was more cleaner. So that is one of the reasons. Like in the most of the Old Testament dietary laws that is given, is uh, I would say like it's one, it's pretty uh, good. Uh, because I actually heard that uh, in 14th century, in when there was a, I think, when there was a black uh, or or like a a flu, something like COVID, I would say, like something like COVID was uh, uh, happening in 14th century, where it was plaguing the or it's a plague in uh, actually it was a plague uh, in e Europe. Uh, I think almost one third of the European population died, and but most of the Jewish people were unhurt because of the fact that they were for, still following that dietary restriction. So it it the point what I was trying to make is like it is very uh, like it, it's a, it's a healthy diet, but uh, uh, but I would I would, I would elaborate it on uh, uh, next. Uh, so I, before that, I will continue. I uh, as I was reading about this topic. Uh, I had a question for you. When was the first time God allowed man to have meat? Do anybody remember or do anybody know where in the Bible, the first time God allowed a man to have uh, eat animals? Was it in the wilderness that after the manners they started complaining that they lack meat to eat? No, it it is uh, it's it, it God gave food to uh, the Israelites to eat, but uh, the the first time God allowed because in definitely in Garden God Eden like when Adam was there there was no need to kill animal because the death was not supposed to be there, but God allowed. It's in actually the after the flood in it's in uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter nine, chapter nine. nine. Three to four. yes. So so, the, so Genesis chapter nine is the first time where uh, God is allowing uh, uh, 
man to eat the food. If somebody can read a uh, system, you can read from the screen from the yeah, answer. Oh, three, two. Yeah, Genesis, Genesis 9, 4. Yeah, yeah. If, some, uh, if somebody can read three and three to five. Everything right? that lives and moves will be food for you. Mm -hmm. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that has its lifeblood still in it. And for your lifeblood, I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal. And from each man too, I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow man. Yeah. So it's uh, it's actually the, just after the flood uh, when God allowed uh, man or especially Noah to just go ahead and have uh, meat. But the point again, like even there, the most important point for uh, uh, for uh, in even in Genesis, even Noah was about not to eat the uh, blood. And uh, I was actually uh, uh, I, like I got a uh, commentary which uh, which talks about uh, that even in Jewish uh, 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 I think comment, even the Jewish commentary, not even the Christian commentary, the Jewish commentary it says that it, that you should not eat the meat directly from a living animal in the sense of like if a ma if an animal is alive you should not be like a uh, like just eating start eating food even before he's died and try to drink the blood before he's died and because uh, i think i think at the end of the day uh, like uh, the point here i think even in the old testament the god like the death is a symbol of sin death has been a symbol of sin so even if god allowed animals to be given as a eaten as a food he is clearly, even in the New Old Testament, that clearly been pointing out that there should not be a cruelty. Like you should not uh, be cruel of like eating like an uh, like carnivorous animal. I think that's the theme of uh, like e eating the uh, not eating the blood that has been emphasized even in Genesis, even like before the uh, the Mosaic law was given, uh, and even here, like the point again and again that uh, God uh, was, or Moses was pointing out that you should be uh, like grateful or I think you should not be like, uh, I think I think this, I think the point I was like, you should not like act like a group, uh, I think crave. I think the point was even in the, in the, uh, in the, in the wilderness, the point was like they were craving for meat in the sense of like, they won't live if they don't get meat. But I think the point of like here is that not to, uh, mix uh, or not to forget about uh, uh, like uh, yeah not to involve any kind of cruelty of a, a involving in meat and the another important point where the, why the blood is being pointed out is about like blood has been uh, in, in verse, uh, in verse uh, 23 it talks about it's actually also quoting from Leviticus verse, chapter 17 verse 14 it talks about the life, uh, the blood, uh, the life, the, the life of a person or life of an animal is in the blood, and it is asking that not to be cruel. It is asking uh, to honor the life, and uh, and that that is one of the reasons of, of Moses being uh, pointing out of being careful about uh, not eat or rather pour out the life blood. And uh, the another reason that um, I, I was reading was uh, that it was a uh, one of the. It seems like it was a part of the pagan tradition to drink blood. It was a part of uh, pagan tradition, and I think it was more of. I think it was even extended to the fact that people were eating blood, thinking that if they eat the blood of an ox, they would be strong like an ox. So I think that is one of the other reasons where. Uh, 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 Moses was or like the Old Testament law. Or the God was like particular that you should be separate from pagan, really uh, a pagan uh, belief, and uh, uh, that is one of the reasons of uh, like some of the reasons of not allowing or not being so strict about uh, not eating the blood. Uh, at this point, I will just open up uh, if uh, anybody wants to add. <laughs> Or have any questions? Anyone else? 
Um, what I gathered from this is that the Lord has been so good to us in that all what He needed from us is just for us, you know, to believe in Him. But I was just imagining that in those days they had to offer all these animals doing all these things that they were supposed to do. Had it been now we're being asked to do this, we won't be able to, but all what the Lord needs from us by sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins is just for us to accept him. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, just like um, Ashish was saying that most of it was to discourage Israelites from the practices of pagans. Because they always sacrifice blood, he, he ate blood. Uh, Israelites took it very serious, and uh, that is why when, <laughs> when Jesus said, "You eat my blood," they could not take it. It was a hard saying for them. When you said you must drink my blood, they said, this is so filthy. How can you hear a teaching like that? That's what you meant, right, Muli? Yes. Okay. So there are uh, several verses in the New Testament. Uh, in uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 28, it says, uh, this is the first council where in Acts chapter 15. So, yeah, 15 verse 28. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrifice to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things favor. So this is the first apostolic council where they have given this command when uh, St. Paul came to search out how they should conduct themselves and how the uh, newly converted uh, believers, non-Jew believers should conduct themselves. So here clearly the blood is mentioned as Molly said Part of the thing was there was a heathen practice of all sorts of blood sacrifice and rituals with blood. And so Paul wanted to, uh, the apostles wanted to be a clear break from the heathen practices that the believers have come from. So there, this is given. And now, so this is one place in the New Testament where there is a, a command or requirements for to abstain from blood. But then subsequently in Romans chapter 14, uh, Paul is writing, uh, now Paul is writing, as one who is in the Lord Jesus, that is verse 14, chapter 14, verse 14, as one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, because anyone who serves Christ mm. in this way is pleasing to God and approved by man. Mm. So, you know, I have two personal experiences. One is when I was in Pakistan, one of the colleagues there had a farm, and there they had wild pig. And being a Muslim, he would kill them and not even touch them. They will throw it, and I have seen the carcasses. Now, for them, the pigs, 
they believe is like the Jews, is an unclean animal. They will not touch it even if they are hungry, sort of. Now, for us, bacon is a favorite dish. You know, Americans love bacon, and most of the Indians I know love bacon too. Uh, that is one experience where uh, what most of us will consider to be good quality food is thrown away. Then I also have the experience in China where the blood cake, you know, they basically take the blood and make it like uh, cheese, you know, what do you call that? Cheese chunk, whatever that is. And then they would and boil that and was considered to be a delicacy and they would eat it. Uh, so we hear Paul is saying, as one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean in itself. So what is very important is that we don't major in the minus. And what is important is holiness, righteousness. But as she said, many of the food habits that is given in the Old Testament was also to keep them healthy and strong. So to that extent, I think like the Black Plague he was talking about, you know, so they were preserved because of their good hygienic food habits. There's also hygiene involved about uh, some of this meat and all. You know. So it is good for us to practice. But if I see a Chinese believer, I have to be careful that we don't take them aside and say, you must stop eating this blood cake, you know, as if that is the most important thing. Okay, that's what. Then, then in First Timothy chapter 4, this is even more important. Please listen to this very carefully. First Timothy chapter 4, it says, The Spirit clearly says that in later, later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciousness have been seared as with a Hot iron. Please listen to this. It says, some have lost, abandoned the faith, and now they have become super specialists in certain things. And look at what they are specialists in, what they are putting burdens on people. They said, verse 3, they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. So in the latter days, some abandon the faith and then they follow deceiving spirits and things that taught by demons. Sadly, here it says there are two things. One is forbid people to marry. Because it is super spiritual. You know, marriage is considered to be lesser. And they would come up with, you know, look at the Catholic priest and some of the people that we are familiar with. They make a big deal about not getting married. It is, if you connect that to verse 1, it is, a, it is deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And then forbid people to marry and all of them to abstain from certain foods which God created to be received. Now, clearly, we all know Sabbath people, Adventist people. You know, Adventist people will eat fake uh, meat made out of, uh, what is it, uh, soybean or something. But they will not touch meat because uh, Mary Eddy whatever the, their prophetess or whatever the leader taught them, meat is forbidden. So they are even holier than the Jews because they go back to the pre-Noah times. So we have to be very, very careful. Now, 
you know, between me and my wife, she is a Jew, I am a Gentile. You know, <laughs> by God's grace, I have been able to travel to many countries and enjoy the food without feeling condemned or without having to, you know, I, I, I'm quite okay. And God has blessed me with, with that blessing. Not that I have eaten blood or anything like that. But what I'm saying is that it is a blessing, that especially when you travel to Africa and other places, that I can enjoy the food as is given. And now the key here is because it is... So what we need to do for everything God created is good. Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. So we must always be, you know, prayer... When we eat food, it should not be a ritual, but it should be a genuine act of committing the food to the Lord for him to sanctify it. And, there, and then what, as she said, whether we eat or drink, we must do it as unto the Lord. Not by lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, or pride of life. Any comments on what I shared, Ashish? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Sister Mary Kurikesho is the one who raised the question. Sister Mary Kurikesho, is it clear? Yeah, it is clear. I, uh, Babu, I don't know whether you read uh, Romans 14, where it says, do not pass judgment on one yes. another. Yeah. You read that? I did not read that particular. Yeah. I read Romans 14, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. there also it says in uh, 14 verse 3, let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. Exactly. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Amen. So, who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. So, you know, so it's, uh, we don't have to pass any judgment on what one eats, because, you know, in the new covenant, uh, in, in the old covenant, yeah, you know, you couldn't eat, and you, yeah, there are food laws, but we don't have any food laws. It is all unto the glory of God, whatever we do. So, amen, then, amen. We don't have to pass judgment on any of those. So, that, that I, 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 that, that was reminded me of, you know, when it came to eating food or, or abstaining from any special food. People have their choice to do whatever. Like Babu Uncle said, you're a Gentile and Molly and is a Jew, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, maybe like uh, just <laughs> wanted to add one more. Like even Jesus mentions it. Uh, it's I think I think the point again, like uh, what when Babu Uncle was pointing out from the New Testament covenant, I think he, Jesus mentions it in Mark chapter 7. Uh, Verse 14 and 15, uh, uh, where he's like, uh, 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 like I think I, I read from verse 14, it says, like, Again, Jesus called to the crowd, uh, to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him, rather, rather, it is what comes out of the man that makes him unclean. Amen. Amen. So uh, even like I think at the end of the day, it is not the. It's it's about like how wh what is your attitude, or what is the uh, uh, the attitude towards your food attitude towards like it's it's I, I think it's again the point is like what's the matter in your heart that matters more than yeah. So yeah, uh, one more comment, uh, Ashish. Is, see, I know somebody who cannot stand the smell of mutton. You know, it has that strong smell. Now, for most of us, it is a delicacy. So if I am around that person, mm -hmm. then I would not, if I invite them for dinner, I would not make mutton. That person cannot even stand the smell, let alone eat it. Now, is that person right or wrong? It is. It doesn't matter. What matters is, am I going to have fellowship around chicken or am I going to insist that person eat mutton? Mm. You have to be very careful. There is, there, there is no condemnation. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. Mm. So the key is, if we walk after the spirit, all these things will become so very clear. Otherwise, we'll be splitting hair like the Jewish rabbis are doing. You know, because every time there is a modern gadget, then they have to figure it out. What can they do with it? Can they use it in this way or that? I don't know. One more, you know, in New York, there is a famous hospital called Sloan Kettering. You know, it's a the world famous cancer hospital. So I had been there and then, you know, I happened to get into an elevator. It is called the Sabbath elevator. Now, what is special about the Sabbath elevator? Who wants to say? No I think it has, huh? Like, that's no clue. Like no a question. Answer. No, Sabbath elevator is, I believe that building has 26 floor or something. If you got into the Sabbath elevator to get to the 26 floor on a Saturday, then you're really stuck. You know what the Sabbath elevator does? You just get in. There is no button to press. It will stop at every floor because according to the Judaic law, pressing the button would be a work you are doing work on Sabbath day. So slow and gathering, very, very smart people. But, you know, there is a Sabbath, it is still there, Sabbath elevator, which is, it will stop on, you know, you get in, stand there, and it keeps going. If you are going to 26th floor, just remember, <laughs> it will take you a while. This is how, uh, for you and us, it may look so ridiculous. But uh, if you are a, there are a lot of uh, what the conservative Jews who go to that hospital for them, that is very important because they don't want to, they will feel condemned if you press the elevator button. Mm -hmm. Amen. Are we so we'll start with chapter 13 next week. We ended at 26. Amen. Shall we pray? Brother Johnson, will you be able to close in prayer? Johnson, you're muted. Father, I thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for the time you have given us together in this evening. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging one another. Pray yes. for one another, thank for you. our needs. And you are, it yes. is always, Lord, as we said, the food we are not eating out uh, is not uh, de defile us. The words which is coming out is, is giving problems, getting hurt to others. That we should be careful about that, not for the food. Lord, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for the work you are doing each and every one of our life, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers those who we prayed already, Lord, continue to help them, strengthen every, every, everybody, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Now we know all about the, how to deal with the blood question. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.